I say Jeff goes first. I think Chris should go first. My, I'm, I'm uploading my demo online currently, so if you wait another three and a half minutes, you can all play with it in real time. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay, Chris, uh, the floor is yours. Oh, actually, before the floor is yours, I better explain what's going on so the people watching this on video just don't see a bunch of random faces. Uh, so this is the PyScript Fun uh, meeting of, what is it? It's the 18th of January, 2024. Uh, and what's PyScript Fun? It's where you turn up and you show something cool and we all go, wow, that's cool. And we learn from each other. And the emphasis is on fun and having fun and being funny and wearing masks and having fun and all of that sort of stuff. So we have two people who have said that they would like to present. Uh, we have um, Dr. Professor uh, Chris Rogers over in Tufts uh, with the mask. Uh, makes him look very villainous. And uh, we also have Jeff, uh, who has a beard, which doesn't make him look villainous. But anyway, there we go. I can't have everything. Uh, you can stroke it in a kind of, yeah, grey beardy sort of a, mm, Gandalf sort of a way. There we go. OK, so uh, Chris, uh, the floor is yours, matey. Uh, you're muted. Still muted. So I'm going to need to leave and come back because Discord needs to get permission to use uh, <laughs> screen sharing. Okay. Uh, oh, I take it back. We're it's... not going to do screen sharing. I'm going to send you all a link. Ah. I'm going to send you all a link if I can figure where Discord does a chat. Top right, there's a little speech bubble. Click on show chat. Right, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you. There you go. Okay. So, this was my Christmas card. Uh, I only sent it to a few people because I'm shy. But, uh, and this was late. But, as, as you might remember, Nicholas challenged us all to do a Christmas card. And I wanted to show a mechanical side. But if you go to the Christmas tree, what you're seeing, and, and I can actually, if I dig up the link to the movie, I can... I can show it to you, but basically what happens is you toggle a uh, Lego Mindstorms uh, button, you turn the motor, that sends a Bluetooth command to a Pico W, which sends MQTT to MicroPython, uh, which, uh, sorry, PyScript, which then sends uh, G-code commands that you've loaded up because you drew this whole thing out in uh, Onshape to a CNC machine, which cuts out your Christmas tree, and at the same time sends it to a root robot over Bluetooth, which is running on a magnetic board moving a pen. And so you can see the pen. And of course, in the movie I made, the battery was almost dead on the uh, on the root robot, so it doesn't look at all like a Christmas tree. Um, but the thing I wanted to, I mean, it, it was fun. <laughs> so that part That's what fun. this meeting's all about, is fun. So we're in a good place, Chris. <laughs> The thing that I thought was interesting was if you go to the link, you can see uh, under index.html that I do, uh, I call a bunch of my own code. And I know with the latest version, Jeff, that was a great video. I almost discorded you that that was a great video, but then Discord got confusing to me, so I said no. Um, it's going to be a lot easier even. This, so this idea that we keep harping on that I have a bunch of different programs that do different things. So there's one program that does the root robot, there's one program that does MQTT, there's one program that does the CNC, and, uh, and then I can just call them all. So I can test them all individually, and then I have the mother program that is very simple and just uh, runs them all. So you can see, for instance, in this one, um, well, you can see all the different codes that were used uh, and uh, the UI development. The UI development is the thing that I've been playing with most. Chris uh, L, I forget his last name, Lafra. is way ahead on UI development. It's just a little complicated for me. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing around with much, much simpler UI. That is simply, I want to tell chat, <laughs> I want four buttons, five buttons looking like a joystick and a text box. Um, and it pops out the HTML, and then I uh, do that. Or I've been playing with Python, um, which I could actually show you the link on that one that I've been messing with, of uh, how to make Python do uh, simple. Let's see if I can share this one too. Um, so what does it look like if you're if you're writing all of the the stuff straight in Python? 
The other thing is, you will notice I've been starting to use these readmes, which I really like, except for the fact that I can't get markup to work properly. Uh, but but other than that minor detail, it's great to have that come up automatically and sort of be a place where you can keep track of how things are going. And the other thing that I thought was really cool is your versioning, which is really nice. So that I can lock a version and then have everything call that one version, uh, and then it really works. So um, while Jeff is talking, I will find the link so that you guys can see the video of this thing actually uh, doing all those things. Um, it's yeah. in the README of the first link. If you look at the bottom, <laughs> it's got a link to the, drop to the Dropbox. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you can see, oh, that's right, I explained everything, didn't I? Yeah. Um, the empty, so, oh, I should add one more thing, and then, sorry, Jeff, then, then it's over to you. Um, the, uh, all of it, so it should, be, it should be noted that my JavaScript skills are second to just about everybody else on the planet. Um, so all of this was done by chat. So chat and I talked. Chat wrote the uh, JavaScript for me. We argued a bit as to what it should look like. And then I just put the wrapper on, which now I don't even need to do. I've got to go back and rewrite all these with the latest version. Uh, and that worked surprisingly well for things complicated like Bluetooth and, uh, uh, and all that other stuff. So I think if there's a way to integrate that cleanly, Martin, I know you've been talking about making it easy for me to log into my chat uh, uh, and all of this kind of stuff. That'd be huge. So you're asking ChatGPT to generate some Maybe. JavaScript I, I code. Sorry? So you're, you're asking ChatGPT to produce some JavaScript code that you're yen, then consuming in PyScript. Correct. That's, wow. That's pretty cool. And if you, so click on the MQTT one uh, on that link there. You can see quite nicely that it, uh, that it refused to connect. That's, a, that's exciting. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> I'll, I'll put the it's, it's like live demos, Chris. You you clearly didn't sacrifice enough chickens this morning to the demo gods. Um. Uh, that's so, a bug in PyScript. That's a bug in PyScript. They don't uh, have a fix coming up for that, so that the links will open up in the new tab. Uh, the link work, you just have to copy it and go into a new tab. Oh, uh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Or if you hold command click, it should go. Ah. Uh, anyway. Watch the movie. It's pretty fun. It took about 30 takes. So, <laughs> yeah. <My> battery's dead. <laughs> okay, so why don't I share my screen and then we can all watch the video and the people watching this video can watch us watching the video, watching the video. Um, share your screen. So if I share the screen, screens, da, 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 entire screen. Okay. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Video go live. Okay, so you're probably all seeing yourself now. But if I go over here and look at this video here, oh man, open this site in a new. Are you seeing this? Hello. Uh, is there loading? Yeah. 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 Okay, so if I don't want to sign into this thing, I don't want to do that. I just. Hi, all. This is my Christmas card, albeit a few days late. Uh, Nicholas, I wanted to give you a card that used a bit of hardware and, and uh, didn't get it all done in time. So I think a mechanical engineer. We start start out with a CAD drawing. Uh, of course, a CAD drawing of a Christmas tree. We can take that CAD drawing and we can. Uh, Slice it up so that we can get the different G codes and we can export it to G code if we want. Um, I already did. And we can go to a PyScript page, which lets us open up the file and shows us the Christmas tree. And so it will take the points and render it on the canvas. We can then connect up to a roof robot um, to have it drive along that path and or a CNC machine, uh, and we can unlock the CNC. So the CNC is over uh, serial, and the root robot is over um, Bluetooth. We then have to initiate this whole thing. So for that, we've got a Spike Prime here. Uh, when we turn the, the motor on Spike Prime, it sends a Bluetooth signal to the Pico. The Pico sends um, an MQTT signal 
into the, uh, into the Hive Broker. The Hive Broker then sends it back to the PyScript page. The PyScript page then starts to move uh, both the two robots, the, the CNC machine over serial and the root robot over Bluetooth. And as you can see, uh, each of these dots shows you where we currently are in the cutting out or drawing out of the Christmas tree. If we uh, wander over to the root robot, we can just see the beginnings of our Christmas tree. You can see the root robot actually has a little bit of problems going uphill. It goes downhill much better than it goes uphill. But it will slowly draw out that Christmas tree. And what's neat about this is that it's a separate PyScript page for each of the different modules. So there's a serial PyScript page. There is a um, MQTT PyScript page, a root robot PyScript page, and a CNC PyScript page. So you can test each of these things on their own, uh, or, and then there's a parent page that calls them all together. So if you, if you look, you can see the serial page, the G code page, the root page, and the MQTT page. And all of those get pulled together into the Christmas tree page, which slowly draws out our Christmas tree. So that's, that's it. That's all I got. Um, Merry Christmas to all, and, and hopefully uh, in, we can do a lot more in the new year. Thanks for watching. So cool. It is, isn't it? It okay. is, it's yes. still still going. Oh. That, that robot is yeah. very cute. It's probably worth it. <laughs> <laughs>still going how many christmas trees have you got on your board now <laughs> oh it's not yeah it can't go uphill we've just seen it there yeah 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 i charged its battery and then it worked fine but yeah. i didn't want to reach the video <laughs> okay so let me just that's way me. that's way cool for many many reasons chris yeah the one of the, what a slightly one of the most boring reasons that it's really cool is that the thing I love about this is when people use what we've done, like I was just, I was just looking at your, so I obviously, first thing I did, of course, was steal your code. And that's the beautiful thing on PyScript.com. I'm like, well, I'm having a copy of that. <laughs> and then I then I look at the uh, the JSON, like the config, and I've never even twigged about, I know it sounds crazy, just simply linking to files in another app as like as and loading them in as using it as like a library. So we ser you're serving like a library from another PyScript app. So you, and you can eat, you don't even, there's no intention you, you don't even need a PyScript app to have any visual representation at all, right? It could just sit there to serve a library. But I'm like, oh, I didn't even I never even, oh, I never even thought about that. Of course you can do that, but like. But that's great for class, right? Because I can set up the stuff for class, and when we find bugs, I can fix it one place, and then all the students get updated. I never even thought about that. Maybe it's just me. You're, you're turning into one of those mind-blown memes that you see on uh, Giphy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Any more questions for Chris or comments or feedback? I love the fact that you had different tabs talking to each other, and that was via MQTT, yeah? Uh, so some of them, and some of them talk, uh, just call each other. So yeah. the parent takes care of it okay so you're going right okay yeah i see what you mean okay cool wow that's incredible well merry christmas um <laughs> yeah I'd, one thing I'd, I'd love to see is like breakdown of the major components or major things that you had to develop to figure like to make to connect things together and to create the app uh and wonder you know how much of that can be put out there as a previewed uh, thing for, for anyone else wanting to do like MQTT connections or other stuff. That would be super interesting. Yeah. But yeah, again, I, I, I keep repeating what everyone is saying and we've been saying this from around Christmas where you started showing 
crazy stuff. This is so amazing, really. Like the amount of things, uh, cool things that you guys, um, you know, produce is so good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's very rewarding for those of us who are actually kind of creating pie scripts to actually see people use it. I wouldn't say in anger. I want to say in 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 a joyful, creative way, and and that's that's what it's about. That's what it's about. So, um, Martin. It just inspired me since Alex was here talking about demos that we could. Can I add one, Alex, if you're happy to demo the file stuff, file explorer stuff? Okay. Sure. Al Alex has been voluntold. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to throw you a curveball there, Alex. It's like, hey, welcome to the meeting. Just relax. <laughs> okay. It's still a work in progress, but yeah, I can deliver. I can, I can demo it. Okay, cool. Well, the, the next one up is Jeff. So you've got however long it takes Jeff to demo his Death Star or whatever he's written in PyScript this week. Yeah. Um, and uh, and, and then, then it's you, Alex. So, uh, Chris, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Everybody's like um, 10 feet tall uh, after, after that demo. Um, and uh, Jeff, the floor is yours, matey. Sure. So, uh, sorry, Alex. It's a short demo today. So uh, work fast. <laughs> um, I can share my screen, I think. Let's see here. This one. Cool. Okay, right, we can see it. Up? Yep. Yeah, very good. So this is just a little toy that I put together. So I've been playing around. The, the new Python potential JIT has me thinking a lot about CPython internals and adaptive opcodes and things. And I realized I wanted more toys to play around with disassembly. Um, so I built this this morning. Um, both for fun and for my own use. And all it is, is if you uh, type Python on the left, then on the right, you see in real time the disassembled opcodes. Um, and it also will tell you if you have a syntax error uh, and also you know line numbers and things. Um, and it gives you a little bit of immediate feedback if you are, if you are, if you have a syntax error in your line, um, it will, the screen turns red, it tells you what the error is. And it just gives you the disassembly on the right here. Um, so just a fun toy to play around with. This is live online. If you go to Jeff.glass, it's the most recent blog post. I think Jeff.glass slash post slash PyScript dis. Um, what I thought was actually kind of the more interesting part of this, like the disassembly is like fun, but pretty niche, right? Yeah. Because most of the time, who cares? Um, the experience of typing code and getting immediate feedback if you have a syntax error is kind of mm. interesting. Like, if you forget a quotation mark in your first line, you don't even get to your second line before you're like, oh, I must have an error somewhere. Um, and there's there's something kind of interesting about thinking about an editor that doesn't wait for you to hit compile or run to tell you you have errors. And you can imagine a version of this, or I, I'm imagining a version of this where, you know, it knows where the first error is, and there's no reason it couldn't just be highlighting lines for you as it goes down and saying, hey, this is the first place you've goofed up. And probably needs a way to turn that off too, because it's kind of annoying if you're doing a big long function or something. But um, so the disassembly was fun, but the editor, the editor part was kind of the, the discovery for me it was like instant feedback is, it's weird, but it's kind of cool. So, so that's what I got. That's pretty damn brilliant. Um, so let me try and explain whether well, I've got two things to say. Uh, first of all, I noticed it says copyright, uh, Jeff Glass 2020, 22. So, uh, we clearly have a time Lord, uh, in our midst. And, uh, so, uh, you know, you've traveled into the future to show us this thing. Um, uh, it's a shame you, yeah. Okay. You can take the PyScript source code back to you back to 2022 and save us a whole lot of work, uh, if you want as well. Um, but <laughs> But what, what's happening is uh, Python, as we know, is an interpreted language, but before it can be interpreted, it needs to be turned into a bytecode. And what we are looking for, and it's the bytecode that's actually interpreted by the Python virtual machine, which is a stack machine, right? Uh, but what we are looking at is the disassembly of that bytecode so that we can see what's going on. For, given the Python that you've typed, this is what it would look like as Python bytecode. Um, in a friendly way, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Uh. Exactly. Yeah, it starts. It starts to sort of like you 
you, you, you want to, if you wanted to learn about bytecode, this is kind of a fun way to do it. I mean, obviously there's not a lot of deep explanation here, yeah. but you type a simple function and say, and then call it. You say, okay, I've got something about, but it's make function opcode. I should go look that up. I'm loading the name of it. Yeah. I'm calling something that's on the stack. So it just starts to be a little bit of a way of like, okay, yeah. well, how does what I type turn into bytecode? Yeah, it's kind of a fun toy. In yeah, yeah, way. yeah. Yeah. Chris, questions from the floor. You, you're in mute as well, by the way. First, first, how in, in Discord do I raise my digital hand? I can, I can give you, you emojis and all sorts of stuff, but I can't raise a hand. No, can't do Martin's it. gonna be very happy to tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have no idea. Because so, Discord. So, oh, what did you do, Nicholas? I did two, two fingers, like, like two thumbs. Sorry, not two <laughs> fingers. Two thumbs, two thumbs, and you kind of exploding background. So just try, everybody okay. try it. Uh, That's the new way to do it. Anyway, Jeff, Jeff, very cool. Yeah. My question is, how hard would it be to then uh, use this as a compiler for a microprocessor? Can I move that code then directly down onto a microprocessor as bit as byte code? Um, you you could. So that's a, that's more or less what. Um, uh, I was talking to Josh actually about this a little bit the other day um, because he's got MicroPython as a target in uh, EduBlocks, but of course all it does is just show you the code; it doesn't run it. But there's no reason you couldn't do this same project with MicroPython or, in theory, C Python or uh, uh, sorry, Circuit Python, and then have it compile the bytes for you and then push them to a device. Um, you'd have to sort of solve that last that last step because some of the some of the like USB and Bluetoothy things for loading are beyond me. But like, if, yeah, there's if, no reason you could just push this out. If only we had somebody who knew about Bluetoothy and uh, USB serial things, uh, who, right? could, who could figure right. out how to plug these things together. Um, that, that's going to be a DFU util, but there is an online version of a DFU util that would do that. Sure. It, thanks. Cool. Yeah. Where's where's the code for this? Just so folks can can play. Um, this is. Uh, I'll tell you what. I will. If we post links, Nicholas, do those show up on the video stream? Uh, if I go and take a look at the chat, yes. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. So the easiest way to find this is just to go to my site, which is jeff.glass, and I will put a link on this page to the source code for yeah. itself. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, awesome. So it's jeff.glass. Forward slash post forward slash pi script. Um, disassemble. Jeff, if also if you put the links in the chat mm -hmm. in here, we can take care of putting them in the video description on YouTube too. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I will put that here. Definitely. Uh, okay, Martin. That's how you raise your hand. Okay, like that. It's like this. It's the fluffy is, thing at the end of your. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is Discord's digital representation of my hand. It's photorealistic. It's incredible. Uh, Jeff, just asking for a friend. Um, what can we do so that we can have these things hosted on PyScript.com? Oh, sure. Um, uh, I just need to put it there. I think the uh, it's it's because I have a development workflow for my site that's pretty fast. That's where I go. If I didn't have that workflow already, and the fastest way to put a thing together was PyScript.com for me, that's where I would go. Um, and I can put one there for sure if we just want to have this one there. So when we release, say, the CLI, for example, and maybe some other tools, we can actually help you publish really quickly so you can just go from straight from GitHub to PyScript.com. That would be awesome. Yeah, I would love to, to have a, a, a CLI that would allow me to, maybe with some processing on my end, say, here's this demo on my page, click here for the PyScript.com version and be able to sort of sync those two would be awesome. Awesome. Coming soon. Yeah. Great stuff. Oh, uh, talking of coming soon to a PyScript.com near you, uh, Alex, uh, how about that for a segue? I should go into TV <laughs> presenting or something. Uh, uh, Alex, the floor's yours, matey. Take it away. Cool. Uh, let's see. Screen one. Go um, yeah, so something that I've been working on that I know a, a lot of people have been wanting to is uh, uh, the ability to, to to drag and drop uh, files from your computer or reorder files, um, create new folders. And so that's something that I've been working on the past uh, couple of weeks. And so let's see, I'll do a quick demo of that. Um, so if I want to 
Just put the screen in here, it'll upload, display it. Um, we can, right now what I'm working on as well is new folders. Um, this is going to turn into a three dot icon soon um, when it's released. Cool. Um, we can also drag in a whole folder structure. Woo! Here's an even bigger one. You can kind of see how the files are uploading. There we go. Oh man, um, I love how it's grayed out and then it comes into kind of focus. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, what else have I been doing? Uh, yeah, I, I, I added these like little lines because I noticed that as you get kind of deeper too, um, it can get kind of difficult to see where you are. So I added these lines that appear on hover. Um, nice. Yeah, I made them a little bit more, uh, trying to focus on accessibility too. So I'll be, I'm going to try and get these to work uh, with the keyboard so you can kind of quickly go through uh, all the different ones. And more file types as well, Alex? Oh yeah, more file uh, types. I was going to say that, uh, yeah. I was going to ask, can you upload an image? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You set them up, Alex will knock them down. <laughs> <laughs> We'll figure out about that one. Uh, let's drag it into here. Just to demo that. Bam. Nice. Super cool. Look <laughs> at that. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Oh, hey, that's the bunny. So bunny. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, icons. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, was, oh, yeah. this is cool. Amazing work, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Really great stuff. That's yeah. going to be so easy. Yeah, folks are always asking for this. We're <laughs> <laughs> putting some too, because yeah, it more, more applicates our our uh, systems. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, just out of interest, I mean, you demoed that in five minutes, and our jaws all hit the floor and went, "Wow, that's amazing!" and everything. How long did it take you to actually build that? Um, probably about, so far, about two weeks, maybe three. Two or three weeks. Yeah, it's just mostly because of like, like little edge cases when you're when you're dragging and dropping files, trying to replicate the, the file system. To, there's a lot of edge cases there. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's a fiddly sort of thing. Any Any questions or comments? Yeah, go for it, Chris. I see your cyber hand has been used, so come on. Let's... My Martin hand. Um, yeah, that, that was awesome. Uh, are you going to be able to do a folder structure on the main page as well, the PyScript.com page? Can I folderize that? Or is... Oh, you mean you put, put putting apps oh, into particular folders and grouping them together? Oh. Yeah, I mean, organize. Yeah, organizing your projects, basically, Chris, is what you're saying. Like, how can we do that? Yes, we've oh, we've been yeah. we've been batting this around a lot, and with UX and Katie, and talking about how we manage this. The idea, you know, should it look like, um, kind of like your um, your tablet or your phone home screen, where you can create groups of things, or should it look more traditional, like a like a computer thing, like a file explorer? Should it look like that, or you, you know, can I can I create these little groups and put things in? So the UX is kind of interesting for that, right? So could you tag them? It. So you get a focus yeah, on me. Yeah. Funny enough, we have tags already actually implemented, but then we haven't got the grouping, the UX yeah. to go behind that. But yes, that's so we've got tags in already, the ability to add tags to your projects, and then. We've got, the, you know, the ideas of sorting and filtering and grouping. Because, that, yeah, that, that's all. That, that's yeah. important One, for meaningful things. You know, if, if I wanted to find, you know, Bluetooth things, um, then I had BLE searching for a tag in, in Chris's sort of homepage. You know, I can quickly get to the stuff that I need to. Um, One thing that will be really good and important uh, is to have a brainstorming session with real users. And, you know, hopefully with users, students, etc., together, and we can work on those things. Yeah. In person, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Also, Alex, have you thought at all about uh, aliases? Because I'd love to be able to drag in my serial code 
into the library of my new code and then have it automatically do all of the the path formation and stuff like that. Oh, I see. You mean like dragging a file from the sidebar into into the editor? Is that no, it? but so like I've got one project that has the serial code all in there and then I'm starting a new project and I want that serial code. So what I was doing is doing the you know, doing the full path and everything, but could I just instead say you know, Notion does this very well, right? I can click on this thing and say, from this other guy, I want to basically have a connection to the serial code in this in project number two. Uh, yeah, that is the thing that we talked early on, actually. Um, reusable app components and, and widgets and stuff like this. Um, I, mean, I think there are two layers on this, right? Like one is at the PyScript app level, and the other one is how can we make that super easy with PyScript.com? Um, in theory, uh, I'll, I'll let you speak real quick. Just let me close, uh, uh, Martin. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing, really, if you could do that today if we change headers, I think, um, in, um, by just putting the, the file path on your TOML file. Um, but I agree with you. Like We should make it just like so immediate to, to happen. Martin. Yeah, I'm just going to say, in terms of just like a shortcut, if you are word specifying something, just the same way in URLs we use at username slash project slug slash something like that, it would be kind of nice to extend that to the syntax in the config somehow. And then, and even if that's never visible, eventually, right, we don't want to see the, at some, at some point in the future, we don't want to see the config really, unless you're really digging low level, it would be ideal not to look at that. But, um, but that's that's definitely yeah. a PyScript.com feature because the config yeah. syntax needs to work whether you're hosting it on Jeff's homepage, my website, or GitHub pages or whatever. Yes. But your yeah. un, uh, unrolling of the at entol slash slug is a PyScript.com kind of feature. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Cool. Any more comments? Any more demos? Awesome job, Alex. Yeah. Well done, really well done, really great demos, everyone. Uh, any uh, um, any last comments, questions? Uh, no, if not, then I'm going to stop the recording.